Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to bring you with me around the beautiful country where I live which is Ireland. So if you've never been to Ireland or if you've been here a long time ago and maybe you're feeling a bit nostalgic then stay tuned till the end because I'm going to show you some beautiful places that we visited in this beautiful country. And also at the end of the video I'm going to show you a little book haul that we made during these fantastic holidays. So make sure to watch the video till the end and enjoy! to my channel my name is Deborah and I'm the author of the blog and YouTube channel she mums with oils so if you're new here thank you so much for joining me today and in this channel here I share mainly our life here in the beautiful countryside of the south of Ireland and although I was born in Italy I live here and I have been here for many many years now and I live here with my husband and our three children and we have now three dogs and we also have four chickens and sometimes I also share little glimpses of our country life. Mainly this channel is about DIY recipes. I show you lovely food recipes every now and then and seasonal content around that. But generally my main focus is to show families and especially moms how to live a, a more natural lifestyle and I show you some simple hacks and DIY recipes to make your cleaning products or maybe beauty products and mainly I focus around the use of completely natural ingredients that you normally have already in your kitchen but sometimes I also share vlog style the adventures that we have on our daily basis and what we do and last time I spoke to you we were just getting ready to go on holiday after the school was finished and uh, at that time we were just about to go back to Italy for a few days we hadn't been in a few months and we were really looking forward to some sunshine good food and of course uh, visiting our families and let me tell you we had a fantastic time now of course my children have been there many many times but there's always something new to see and uh, of course we hit the major and I would say probably more visited tourist uh, attractions like uh, we brought them to see the Vatican City and the Colosseum and all the area around uh, the Colosseum and the Fori Imperiali, all that beautiful area but we also brought them up to see some places that they actually had never seen before. I am originally from Rome so for me that area is very familiar and both my family and my husband's family they both live there and uh, so it's, it's easy for us to go visiting around uh, and in the evening we can just go home. So we brought my children to see this beautiful area of Rome which is really really in the city centre which is called uh, Trastevere which is a very very popular area and um, it's full of these beautiful cafes and restaurants and uh, as you can imagine the nightlife in that particular area is really phenomenal and you can it's just so beautiful you can just sit outside it's an area that is not too frequented by cars so it's easy to you know to walk in the streets and it's very very safe and all of these beautiful cafes and restaurants they have all uh, tables and chairs outside and so in the evening in the summer when you know the temperature has cooled down a bit it's really really nice uh, to go and sit there and maybe enjoy a drink or a meal and listen to some live music it was really really nice and uh, my children were really impressed I have to say they really liked that area because they hadn't seen it before and uh, so it was really a pleasant surprise for them the temperatures were really really soaring I'm sure if you watch the news uh, regularly you know that uh, at the moment you know the whole of Europe is under this very oppressive uh, fog you know of heat you know the temperatures are really really high which is you know in a way it's also normal it's summer and when we were there at the end of June it was really really hot the hottest day that um, 
was recorded when we were there was 39 degrees uh, and so it was really hot but it was so beautiful because anyway there was no pressure we could go out you know at our leisure and uh, just rest in the shade whenever we wanted and obviously we made sure to have loads of fresh water and ice cream as as you can imagine and then we came back home for a, a few days and after that we decided to well we had everything organized already we we started traveling a little bit around Ireland. This is something that is relatively new for us because up until um, COVID, so 2020, um, we normally would have spent all our summer holidays, maybe for a week or two if we could abroad and we went to visit different countries in Europe. But of course when COVID came, people could not travel abroad. And so that's how we really rediscovered the beauty of this country. And so we went to visit some pl different places in Ireland uh, every single year after. So this is our fourth year traveling around uh, Ireland. So, so this year we wanted to kind of follow up on this tradition. So we set off uh, and we drove north. So first we made a stop for a few days in Dublin which is a city that I really, really like. I absolutely love going to Dublin. It's a big city. The shopping is fantastic, as you can imagine. And there's loads of lovely small independent shops and independent cafes. And the atmosphere is just so beautiful. You know, the food is excellent. And we have discovered that one of the last times that we were there, this beautiful pub that is in the, really in the city center in Temple, in Temple Bar and uh, it's kind of a traditional pub so they serve traditional food and uh, dishes and uh, the, the, the place is beautiful is completely done in wood inside the stuff is very very friendly and the food is absolutely phenomenal and of course I will leave all the links in the description box below so that if you're planning to travel here to Ireland you will have some uh, places that maybe I've already tested for you and you know where to go. And uh, so we did a few things, uh, obviously in Dublin, a little bit of shopping, and we discovered this absolutely gem of a place. Now I have also lived in Dublin, and I have, you know, visited anyway loads of times, even now you know that we live here in the south. But this place is in an area where I don't normally go and so I didn't know that it existed. I was just googling. We, you know, as you know, we are big fans of books in my family and uh, so we were looking for uh, some books uh, to buy, you know, something like that. And uh, apart from the, you know, the, the chains of bookshops that we have here, we have the major one which is called Eason's and then we have uh, Waterstones which is uh, based, I think, in the UK. And, but there are also small independent bookshops and whenever we can we like to visit those. So we visited a few of the small ones and some of them are really really beautiful and they have beautiful editions even of classic books. But then just by accident really we discovered this that is you know claims to be the largest independent bookstore in Ireland. And judging from its sheer size I would you know, I have no issues in believing that it is the biggest one in Ireland. And this bookshop is called the Chapter Bookstore. And again, I will leave the link in the description box below because they have a beautiful website and you can actually order online. Now, let me tell you, I don't think I have ever, I don't think I've ever seen a bookshop as spectacular and as beautiful as this one. And I have seen a few 
And of course I come from Roma, which is a very big city and we have loads of beautiful big bookstores. This one was just phenomenal and we spent there I think about two hours or something like that. So in the, 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 the ground floor is absolutely massive and in the, so the, the foyer or in the entrance anyway of this bookstore they have all new books and we could find in their books that we could not find in any of the other whether they were chain bookshops or independent ones so i was delighted because in one store i could actually find everything i wanted and more and the prices were really really competitive but at the back of the bookstore which is as big if not probably even bigger than the front of it they had all second-hand books and let me tell you that was just i've never seen anything like this before they had literally every book that you could imagine and the children's section was massive and like myself and my girls you know we had the three biggest readers in the family you know we were just amazed and let me tell you we came out with nearly 20 books we had a huge huge stack we also needed a big shopping trolley you know to carry all the books we got and we just couldn't believe the quality of the stuff that they have and also the quantity and we got uh, they had used books for one euro or for 10 euros uh, depending obviously on the book so i got some of them for five euros and some of them of course we bought full price so as i said it was just uh, one of the best bookstores that i've ever seen and now I cannot wait to go back to Dublin so that we can go and buy more. I was really, really impressed and I said to my girls, look, let's buy as many books as we want, of course. And then the next time we are in Dublin, then we'll come up with a list and we can browse and see what other books, you know, we want to buy. And of course, I understand that some of these books, especially the new ones, you could probably find cheaper on Amazon. But personally, I really like to support the small independent shops. Now, this was not small in size, but anyway, it's an independent bookstore and it's an Irish owned one. So I'd rather support these people rather than Amazon. And now when I do buy from Amazon loads and many, you know, very often, but in this case, I was really happy to spend my money there and I will be definitely, definitely going back and i will leave the link so that you can see yourself the choice that they have and at the end of the video i will show you the books that uh, i got so to give you an idea of uh, you know what we get what we got there and what you can find so that was dublin and then after going to dublin we traveled we started traveling a bit up north which is far away from where we live so we too that's why we stopped so that we didn't have to drive maybe for five or six hours so all in one go and um, so then we went to visit Malahide castle which is absolutely beautiful beautiful stunning place and unfortunately the last time we had been there i don't even think we had my youngest son so probably it was 10 years ago or something like that and it's just as beautiful if not more uh, just as I remembered and so the estate where this the castle grounds uh, are is absolutely stunning they have this beautiful beautiful botanical gardens that are completely open so you can go and visit and uh, the first thing you see it's this butterfly house so you go in and there's all this it's like a greenhouse so it's completely enclosed obviously to keep the butterflies safe inside and basically you walk and you have these beautiful butterflies uh, just uh, you know just flying around you because they're used to people and anyway the space is enclosed uh, and it was really magical and they have all a little area with the cocoons so you could actually see the cocoons and i suppose if you're lucky you might get to see them when they're actually coming out of the cocoons now we didn't see that but we could see the cocoons on one side and then we went and saw the botanical garden so we had a lovely you know walk around and they have this beautiful cafe inside but they have the most amazing food so we stopped for tea and cake and cream it was just gorgeous gorgeous food 
and after that then we visited the actual castle and to go in there you book the specific time given to you for the tour because you're not allowed inside on your own but the tour is completely worth it and it's included anyway in the same price and of course being a castle it's haunted by ghosts and the tour ends actually with the visit to the big dining hall which is haunted by this um, ghost of a lady that killed uh, i think it was three of her husbands and also there is um, a little ghost that we couldn't see but i know that it was there and and this little ghost belonged to the jester at some point in time in this uh, castle who was in love with one of the ladies there but of course this love was not permitted because she belonged to a different uh, social circle so it was not allowed and that's why now he haunts the castle because he still hasn't recovered from this forbidden love of his life. So after we moved up north again and we went first thing in the morning the following day we went to visit the Morn Mountains for a beautiful hike. You know if you follow me that we are a very outdoorsy kind of family and we like uh, walking in the woods and doing hikes and so we couldn't uh, not do a proper hike now when we arrived the weather was absolutely awful as we were trying to actually get out of the car a big shower came and we were nearly drenched we just made it in time to get back into the car but after that then the rain thankfully stayed away a bit there was only a few showers here and there but it was fine it was nothing that we couldn't deal with because we had the proper gear of course on us and uh, now in, uh, in this specific area now there are different paths so depending on your level of fitness and also the, you know, the age of the people with you you can go from the kind of easiest and fastest hike to the more difficult they call it the black um, the black line or the black path or whatever it is that they call it and so we went for the red we didn't feel that with my son being young maybe we could go for the black one but it was a very long one anyway and we were very very happy the the, the mountains there you know the, the woods are, are exceptionally beautiful you know nature in ireland as you can imagine is really really something you know to behold and so we were very happy and there was lots of people even swimming in the in the water there all despite the weather and it was not warm by any standard but it was really really nice and we spent nearly all day all day there because you know it was a longer hike but after that the weather literally improved and the sun came out so we decided to see something else so we went to see what's called castle ward which is another beautiful beautiful place that i actually had never even heard of so it was something completely new to me and i am glad that we went there is this historical home that you can see inside and uh, this was a free tour so we could just see and just just wander around we were following a path obviously but we could you know just see what we wanted and um, they had this beautiful library that obviously caught our attention it was so so beautiful with all these lovely old books and i could just picture myself sitting there you know on a winter afternoon on a winter evening with the fire on and with a little lamp next to me it was really really charming and so beautiful and not only that they have also hiking uh, you know uh, paths hiking areas that you can see now we didn't go for that because we were just coming from a very long hike so we didn't feel that we could add uh, even that but you know they are there anyway and you can also see the ocean from there and so this would be on the northeast side of ireland and so this you know it's just basically what you see across would have been the uk and also in this specific um, you know in the grounds of this castle ward is where they actually shot part if not probably everything of the famous tv series game of thrones and on the grounds as well of this castle they were having they have this little courtyard inside obviously the inner part of the castle and they have this beautiful second-hand bookshop 
and they have a lovely cafe and actually they were doing some live jazz music in the afternoon when we went so that was kind of like a little cherry on top of the cake and it was really really nice so just to sit and listen to the music and relax with a warm drink and some food it was really lovely and also they have a little kind of gift shop so we went in just to have a look and they sell ice cream as well and I found a little treasure I couldn't believe that I actually found it there so I got it I will show you now so I got uh, this book here and so this is Gobolino the witch's cat by Ursula Moray Williams and this is I will show you close by the reason why I was really pleased and I had to get this book because I remember when I was very little and we are talking really about you know the, the before the ice age at this stage um, I could have been probably six or seven something like that my mother bought us some magazines where the story was translate, translated in Italian and every week or whatever bi-weekly it was the magazine we would go to the news agent and buy and there was a different chapter every week and so it, it brought back some lovely memories of when I was little and so I said to my girls look we'll get it and it's actually this edition celebrates the 80 years since the first publishing this book so I couldn't really pass uh, on this and I'm glad uh, that we got it and my eldest daughter, believe it or not, actually read it in the car after we left. So I was really, really happy. It was something really lovely. Yeah. After this, by then we were nearly at the end of our mini holiday here in Ireland and we went as far north as we could and we went to see in County Antrim the Giant's Causeways, which we had never seen and my God, it was something uh, like out of a fantasy movie and if you don't know this is um, basically it's an area that it's on the ocean and uh, there's this very particular there is no beach there's just these rocks that are so particular really looks as if they were put there by some aliens coming from another uh, planet and uh, it was absolutely packed with tourists as you can imagine it's a very very famous area of Ireland so this we're talking about the north of Ireland so really at the top of the island and um, it was fabulous and uh, obviously I, will, I am showing you now what we saw and it was a bit scary because I don't do very well with heights but it was amazing and of course that came with a mini hike because uh, you know from where you arrive and where you park you have to walk all the way down to the actual causeway and see uh, like where the ocean is where the beach would ideally be and then you have to walk all the way up and uh, it was lovely anyway and then there's also this bridge that you can see it's a rope bridge now i didn't go there because my children didn't want to go it was a bit scary for them so i stayed back with them but my husband did go and visited and in the end he did say look it's probably for the best that the kids uh, didn't come and especially even myself you know i really because you're suspended 25 meters high so i just i didn't think that it was the right thing for me to do Today, as we were driving back we stopped in Kildare where th there's the Irish National Stud and uh, this is a lovely lovely park where of course they, they keep and train and also sell uh, horses for the races and uh, you could literally spend there all day the weather was really nice it's very very famous because they have attached to the studs they have this beautiful Japanese gardens that you can visit and also then they have the studs themselves and they have a little touch cottage they have a beautiful play area for kids okay so as promised i'm gonna close this video about our holidays and i'm gonna show you what books i got in the beautiful independent bookstore in dublin 
Now, I already know that I forgot to bring here one of the books that I got, which is The Girl with the Pearl Hearing, and uh, I'm sure that you know what book I'm talking about. There was also a very famous movie with Scarlett Johansson as The Girl with the Pearl Hearing, and I have read already that book, but I have read it in Italian, so I decided I wanted to reread it, and this time I purchased the English edition, and I just bought it second hand, and unfortunately I forgot to bring it here, but it's in my sitting room. So I got, and this was only 10 euros, despite the fact that this is actually a new book, the new Agatha Christie from Lucy Wolsey, which is really the biography basically of Agatha Christie, which I'm sure everybody knows was probably the biggest, if not like definitely the biggest, you know, crime and mystery thriller of all times and she was English and she only died in the 70s so not too long ago after a very long life. Now this is the book that I have just started. I've only really started so I'm at page 10 so I don't have much to say yet but what I've read so far I really really like and also there's loads of pictures inside so you can actually see I get little glimpses of uh, her and her life and it's lovely to see because she was born in 1890 uh, 1890 sorry so you can see loads of the pictures and I will show you now are really Victorian and it's uh, you know for me it's you know very astonishing to see how this was like you know somebody that died in 1976 i think it was it was born in a completely different era with different uh, costumes and uh, so and that wasn't too too long ago i'm looking for the pictures yeah that's what i wanted to show you here see this is a picture of her with her mom so there's lots of lovely pictures inside and of course that's uh, her story which i find very fascinating and if you're not familiar with the story of Agatha Christie, there was a time in which she completely disappeared for a few days. And so Lucy Wolsey basically explains from her findings what she thinks happened during those days. So I'm really interested and intrigued. I want to know as well what happened. So this is the book I'm reading at the moment. And then I got second hand The Miniaturist by Jesse Barton. And Again, this is a book that I've been meaning to buy and read for a long time, but I never did, and then because we were there, and I thought, look, it's only 5 euros, so I got this one. And if I like it, I might buy also other books from the same author. And then I got from Alison Weir, this book is called The Lady Elizabeth, and again, this is second hand. And uh, this is about obviously Elizabeth I, uh, so Tudor, so during uh, her reign. And um, this is the part of history that has always interested me the most, uh, aside from anything to do with Second World War. And so every time I find books that are based on the real, real events, or even if it's completely fiction uh, products, about the Tudor times, I always buy them because uh, you know I'm very very interested in this part of history. I did my college dissertation on the, the Tudor family, so I'm uh, I'm very happy to read everything that I find about them. And then I found this, which is we couldn't find in any of the bookshops we visited uh, here in Cork or up in Dublin, and finally we found it there. It's called Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry, I think it is. And this is the cover. Now, this is actually for young adults. Now, I did buy myself and I bought this new. So this is not a second-hand book, but it's actually for my daughters. Um, this was recommended in one of the, the booktubes, you know, the YouTube channels that I follow about books. And uh, I thought that it was very intriguing the way they were describing it. Now, I know nothing about it. I forgot since I heard this book because it's been so long and we couldn't find it. But I'm really looking forward to read this. And, um, if, um, and then I'll read it first probably and then I'll, I'll give it to my daughters. And uh, or maybe they'll read it back the first time, not sure. But anyway, I'm looking forward to reading this one as well. And then last but not least, I bought for myself, finally got 
Babel by R.F. Kuang, which is a Bible of a book. It's absolutely massive. So it's 546 pages, but, and I'm used to read very, reading very big books, but the font is also very small. I would probably need my glasses to read this one. And uh, I know that I'm probably very late uh, to join uh, the party because this book has been you know, around for a while. But again, this is another book that I couldn't find and I didn't want to buy it online. And I was almost resigned to buy it on Amazon if I couldn't find it anywhere else. But anyway, we were there and again, this was a very good deal. And it was one of those books that had a sticker here that said that if I was to bring it back after within 30 days from purchase, they were gonna give me something back because of course they want to have it a second hand. But of course I'm gonna keep it because first of all, I don't live in Dublin and there is no chance I'm gonna go to Dublin the next 30 days. But uh, because you know, I'm, um, I'm very particular with my books and I normally keep everything, even though I know that I might never reread them, but I, I cannot just part with my books. And one day I might read it again or I might pass it on to my, my children, I don't know. Anyway, this is uh, um, a kind of a fantasy story that is based on, you know, a fictional Oxford in 1836. And it's a bit of a magic uh, throwing in. So I'm really, really looking forward to this one. And this is probably the book that I will read next after I've finished Agatha Christie. And these were only the books that I got for myself. And as I said, I am missing one. But then my, my girls got some books as well, but I'm not gonna show you those, of course. So this was our book haul. And of course, I still have some books left from my previous haul. So I think that I have a little bit to read now before I will visit another bookshop again. But never say never, when it comes to books, I might find something I really want to get. And I might just, ah, uh, sure. I can hold and store another book at home. So guys, that is all for today. I hope you enjoyed coming around Ireland with us because this is a very beautiful country. And I hope that I showed you the beautiful, amazing things that you can see here in this country. And also I hope that I give you some ideas about the books that I bought in case you were looking for your next read. Don't forget that all the information will be in the description box below. And also, if you want to have a look at my blog where you can find lovely homemade and wholesome recipes and also little DIY everyday hacks and natural swaps to make your life a little bit healthier and a little bit happier, I hope. I blog every week about natural solutions, simple living and homemade food. Have a fantastic week. Thanks again for joining me and I will see you again very soon. Bye bye.